The invocation Givo Jalo is a declaration, a blessing, translated as living green, but also meaning vitality, health, the color of spring. It is the calling forth of the rebirth of life. We are directly continuing that which was left to us by our ancestors. Probably the most important part of the sacred festival is raising a new generation with the ancient traditions. Our aim is to bring more of the values of the past to the present and future. Let there be harmony. Let there be harmony. When the first thunder rolls, the first buds sprout, and nature awakens, it is a truly special time. On the last weekend of April, the carriers of the ancient Baltic faith, Romova, gather at the ancient observatory in Kulonis, near Molete Observatory, and celebrate the festival of the first green of spring, Yore. We try not to miss that time, the awakening of nature, when the first buds sprout, birch sap flows, when the great awakening of nature begins. We aim to remind people that they are a part of nature, that within them, this awakening also takes place. And during this period, one should consciously be in and with nature. Of course, when all of us gather and live within this explosion and awakening of spring, you yourself awake. The whole year you are filled with its strength and beauty in your heart and eyes. It lives within you all year long. The celebration begins with a pilgrimage from the ancient observatory. The participants of the celebration Yore, called Yorenes, having decorated the shrine in greenery, carrying various flags, dressed in traditional Baltic clothing, symbols, and jewelry, continue to the castle mound of Kulonis. There they perform rituals thanking ancestors for the blood spilled in battle defending freedom and the indigenous religion. Let there be harmony. May our ancestors be with us. May they see our flags and never forsake us. We ask this through Holy Gabia, Goddess of Fire. Let there be harmony. The main activity on the mound is to remember what our ancestors did in this place. How did they live here? How did they defend this castle hill? How did they survive? How did they preserve their culture? We, by remembering and telling the young, revive them in a sense. Thus, we understand the traditions and their lives much better. Communal celebrations were already held on castle mounds. The visiting of mounds is at least a several hundred year old tradition. Even when the mounds were no longer used for their original purpose, it is very understandable because in those times the celebration itself, the temples and the shrines were usually built on an elevation of some sort, mostly hills. These mounds have a direct connection to the ancestors. They were built by them with their own hands. Having bowed to the spirits of freedom fighters upon the castle mound, Romovans continue their procession back to the ancient observatory in Moleta Regional Ethnic Homestead, carrying the sacred flame. Here they light the holy altar. The flame unites the participants with the gods and ancestors. Gabia, goddess of fire, holy Gabia, glow once lit, smolder once covered. Gabia, goddess of fire, holy Gabia, unite us. Vaidilutas tended the eternal flame. Vaidilas performed sacred rites and made offerings to the gods in holy places. 
and such a beautiful sight reaches us till this day. And even though the fire here does not burn eternally, it is only lit for sacred rites, we still use the term eternal flame. Fire is a symbol. It burns to witness our constant connection to ancestors. And when it no longer burns here, and all is ended, everyone who has been around this altar carries this flame with them in their hearts. With the most beautiful Sutartines, we give thanks to the gods, Perkunas, Gabia, and Jemina. According to the senior members of the community and the high priestess, the wisdom of the ancient Baltic religion is based in harmony and communion. It is essential to foster these values today. We thank you for the first seedlings and the riches of our granaries, the venerated Mother Jemina. Enlarge our harvest. Strengthen our health. Multiply all life. Today, the day of the awakening, Yore, we wholeheartedly ask this of you. Let there be harmony. Let there be harmony. Let there be harmony. Not a single celebration of Yore goes without a shared feast the making of celebratory stew and scrambled eggs. Once we taste the stew, no one can say, I don't know you, who are you? We will have eaten from one cauldron, from the same ladle. Sharing of food unites us as kin. It also unites us with those who are here and eat with us unseen, the spirits of our ancestors and the gods. That which falls to the grass is for Jemina. That which will be eaten by birds and carried to the sky by their wings will be for God Dievas. An important part of the feast is swinging on the swings. Swinging is said to bring luck for the whole year. Then, decorated eggs, Yoruche, are rolled. They embody the focus of the vital powers of the world. Everybody instantly understands that if you haven't slurped stew from the same bowl, you've not experienced fully what it means to be a part of a community. It is the most important ritualistic feeling. First of all, once the stew is finished, the high priestess puts the nodegule into the cauldron. It is a huge pole used to stir the stew, then burned in the fire beneath the cauldron and placed into the stew. Then we can finally eat. Shared eating is called a communion. It is not a Christian term, but rather a scientific term, typical of many cultures around the world. It is enough to imagine a celebration without shared eating to understand that it would not be a celebration at all. Shared eating and shared drinking also, in essence, is a feast. Even the symposiums of the Greeks, for example, Plato's dialogue, is called a feast. In essence, the gathering and feasting together is the core element of the celebration. In the worldview of our ancestors, Perkunas was the main supplier of godly vital powers. During the celebration of Yoda, stones are sacrificed to Perkunas with requests of strength and power for oneself, one's relatives, and the whole nation. The stone offered is enhanced and given meaning as it enters the temple in dedication to Perkunas. As we know, according to our ancient faith and mythology, Perkunas is deeply connected with stones. His powers manifest through them. For the longest time, our ancestors considered stones as the most powerful tools in life. They believe that stones strengthen the powers of the person holding them. Stones retain their symbolic importance since those times as a symbol of strength and fortitude. And as you know, there is an abundance of sacred stones in Lithuania. It is said that the Baltic faith was destroyed by Christianity. But the members of Romova are not only reviving the old traditions, but aim that the ancestors' traditions of community and harmonious life would become today's way of life. This is a symbol of wisdom, fortitude, and luck for you. Blessed by the ancestors, you are now a member of Romova. Create harmony. 
Dr. Rosalskas, in his book dedicated to the Yorene of Kulonis called The Sunken Temple on the Castle Mount of Kulonis. He writes, The celebration of Yore that is held upon this mound can be linked to a motive from the old myths that a sunken temple can once again be brought up to the light of day. According to him, the temple sinks out of memory once rituals stop taking place in it. As soon as rituals begin to occur in the temple grounds again, it rises from the fog of memory. In the research of folklore, strict decisions are hardly possible, but there can be a very high probability of something. The word church, Bozhnicha, is borrowed from the Slavic languages before Christianity came to Lithuania or Lithuania accepted it. Word for word it means a place for the gods. In essence, this word was used to describe temples and shrines. Thus, the probability remains that the Mount of Kulonis was not only a defensive structure where battles took place, but it most likely was also a holy site. It's a very compelling reason for the modern participants of the celebration of Yoda to climb up to that mound during their sacred rite. To the 21st century person, the carriers of the ancient Baltic faith might look like nature worshippers, pagans. Let there be harmony. Celebrations such as Yore help to negate such a point of view. It's simply a symbol of what a person thirsts for in their soul. Trees can bear fruit and crops can fill our granaries, but a person can still remain empty. That is why we mustn't be late and live as nature lives. Mankind is nature and must also bear fruits and fill granaries, whatever their occupation may be, a farmer, a scientist, or a writer. Each one of us creates in our own way. The celebration of Yoda is meant to ignite and to empower, through godly powers, any type of creativity and to turn a person's year into a fertile, fruitful, and successful one. We wish this for each other with our words and rituals. To those participating in Yoda for the very first time, it might appear to be a spectacle or a form of entertainment. Few know that the first descriptions and mentions of the celebration of Yoda can already be found in the writings of 19th century Lithuanian historians. Wasn't the name of this celebration mentioned in the writings of Dokantas for the first time? Then that's already a celebration with a continuous 150-year-old tradition. We might not be able to prove it before Dokantas, but just because we can't find documented proof of it before Dokantas wrote about it, doesn't mean it didn't happen. We just can't show it. Truly, no one can speak with certainty in terms of ages, for our written sources are quite late. Although researchers of Sutartina say that they go back several thousand years, so we too think that our traditions are exceptionally old and they are exceptionally rich. There are no surviving detailed descriptions or testimonies about how exactly the celebration of Yoda looked like in the past. This calendar celebration of the Balts resurfaced after the restoration of the religious community of Romuva. Now we should take a look back at the 70s, 1967 to be exact, when students of the university with their lecturers who were inspired by Jonas Rinkunas celebrated the first celebration of Rasos in Kernave. There an altar was built, the holy fire was lit and songs of the solstice were sung. Words were spoken for the gods and for the ancestors. Then truly, it seemed that the flame lit there spread to everyone and everywhere. Only three celebrations of Rasos were organized legally. Such activity wasn't easy back then. The Soviets tracked those fostering ethnic culture and religion, called the celebrations nationalistic gatherings, and would even disperse them. Our activity needed to become secret, but that didn't stop its expansion. Yore became the continuation of the celebration of Rasos, but only after 1980. They were held, of course, 
but only in the circle of close friends. They were secret, because any type of ritual was forbidden. Similarly, the celebrations of Yore, the winter solstice, and of course the celebration of Rasos, were rituals celebrated by a small circle of friends, or by folk ensembles. The first celebrations of Yore were held in Karmazine, near Kernave. Pagan movements in general, in scientific literature, are considered to be reconstructionist. It means that they restore traditions, practices, and the faith itself. The case of Romuva is interesting in the way that they focus on the folklore, the songs, the stories, in other words, on the unwritten tradition, the oral tradition. After the restoration of Lithuanian independence, in 1992, Romova registered as a religious community. Jonas and Daiva Vaishkunas restarted the organization of the celebration of Yoda that gathers all the carriers of the ancient Baltic faith 24 years ago. Since then, the rituals continue every year at the same agreed-upon time. On the last weekend of April, this year the 24th celebration was supposed to take place. Next year, it will be the 25th. For a quarter of a century, we continue the celebration of Yoda. I want the youth of Lithuania to go to India, to go to any and all countries and regions of the world. I want them to experience life, to see other cultures. But I also want them to understand that there is nothing more important or interesting or meaningful or beautiful than what we have inherited from our ancestors and our fathers and our grandfathers. It is very important and so precious. Only we can foster this, preserve it and carry it to the future. That is a great dream of mine. It's a beautiful story. I see a lot of religious meanings in these celebrations. Celebrations of Yoda, along with the others. For example, celebrations of Gemina. It only adds to the implications that the ancient Baltic faith is another religious community in Lithuania, with their distinctive religious practices, with the specific effects to everyday spiritual life and experiences. The revival of traditions and the continuation of the path laid by the ancestors often catches the eye of many Lithuanians, especially those who live abroad, it makes them look back at their country in a different light. The community is open. Anyone who wants can attend the celebrations. Data in the 2011 census states that the community of Romova has 5,000 members. And according to the members themselves, it is quickly expanding. Even Lithuanians living abroad are showing an increasing interest in joining the community. Every year, dozens of them fill the ranks of participants at the celebration of Yoda. I came here on the path laid by my ancestors. Now it is my responsibility to continue on this path. There is a story that comes to mind of one girl, one woman, which is quite memorable. She emigrated to the UK. She was truly disappointed in Lithuania and her living conditions. She did not see any reason to stay here. One day, while browsing the internet, she saw Romuva for the first time. She then came to our summer camp, once, twice. It became such a great inspiration for her that later she established Romova in the UK, in London. And that Romova was very active for a few years until she finally decided to come back to Lithuania for good. Even though Romova unites several thousand people, it still hasn't received acknowledgement by the government. The community meets all the necessary official standards for religious community, which the Ministry of Justice has concluded. But in 2019, the parliament has rejected the request of recognition by Romova. 
We are unhappy that our rightful and legal expectations are not fulfilled. It is quite obviously disrespectful and unpleasant. There are certain options that would become available to us having received government recognition. We perform many rituals, such as weddings and blessings of children. And if, for example, people after similar rituals in the Catholic Church need no more official paperwork, after our ceremonies, people are legally required to visit the civil registration offices to register their union because our weddings are not legally acknowledged. Having observed the political debate on the topic of whether Romova should receive governmental recognition, I cannot fully deny that the role of the Roman Catholic Church was very significant, as was the role of political leaders and politicians with strong ties to the Roman Catholic Church in determining this decision. Truthfully, those discussions showed that the religious field is still mostly perceived from the viewpoint of the Roman Catholics in Lithuania, as if seen through a magnifying glass of the Roman Catholic perspective. The most important thing for the members of Romova is that despite these misunderstandings, the traditions that they revived have a continuation. By the initiative of Daiva and Jonas Vaishkunas, the revived celebration of Yore spread across the entire country and out into the world. Yore is celebrated in Vilnius, Kaunas, Vese, Shole, Pogege, Kurtuvene, region of Telshe, Punskas, London, America, and elsewhere. There was a very strong interest in ethnic culture in the 80s and 90s in Lithuania. It was called the Movement of Ethnic Culture, in which I also took a part. We always dreamed to revive not only the celebrations of Yore, but all celebrations of Lithuania, so that they would be celebrated in every corner of the country. We work towards this dream to this day, actually. Even Yore, from the very beginning, was intended to be a constant celebration. It happens no matter what, in death and in life, no matter the year and what may come. And everyone knows that there is a time and a place to come and that Yore will be, no matter what. The spiritual thirst of Lithuanians, their spiritual longing has a form of its own, known since the old days. And finally, it is regaining it, bit by bit, thank God. It is the essence of life for a nation, its own meaning of existence, crucial to a nation's survival. If we lose this old tradition completely, we will die. Once it happens, it will not be us to notice it. It will be said by those observing. That's it. They are no more. They are no longer alive. While we are alive, we're living thanks to this ancient spiritual tradition, and only because of this. According to Jonas Vaishkunas, the awakening of nature in spring is a metaphor for the spiritual awakening. A whole new generation has grown up with the celebration of Yore that considers Yore their own by birthright. Children named Yoris, Yoriga, Yorunia spread across Lithuania. The first buds of the Lithuanian spiritual awakening that sprouted in Yore prophesies the spring of our fatherland, our blossoming, flourishing, and bearing fruit. Standing before the eternal flame of Romuva, I announce the ancient Baltic faith that has united families and tribes for many ages that has saved and inspired our nation. Today is here within my heart. English voiceover and translation editing by Kimo Arbis, Vaidila of Romova, North America.